What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome back to the third video in this series where I am diving into quantum computer stocks to better analyze them and figure out what stock I want to invest into as well as to show you how to perform research and due diligence on a new industry. So if you get any value out of these videos, remember to click that like and subscribe button. Now let's jump right in. Okay, so just to get us started, what is quantum computing? Well, IBM describes it as harnessing the phenomena of quantum mechanics to deliver a huge leap forward in computation to solve certain problems. And so quantum computers are kind of the next evolution of computers and they are built and designed to solve specific problems that traditional computers cannot solve. And so the companies that we are gonna look at today include a variety of different companies. Two of them I've already covered and made videos about. So if you wanna learn about these two companies, definitely check out my channel and watch those videos. Today we are gonna to talk about IonQ, ticker symbol IONQ. And next video we are gonna talk about this company that is currently going through a SPAC merger called Rigetti. Now there are also some other major players in the quantum computer space such as Google, IBM, and Honeywell. I currently own a position in Google and I think everybody should own a position in Google. I do not own positions in IBM and Honeywell and we are not gonna cover them because they also do a variety of other things and they are not really kind of pure play quantum computer stocks. Now, when it comes to IonQ, the stock is actually up 6.32% today as I take this screenshot, currently trading at $17.88 under the ticker symbol IONQ. The stock ran up to a high of $35.90, and it looks like as of right now, we might be bouncing off of this $15 level. We have some great indicators from our MACD, which looks like it's about to cross over. The RSI is starting to move higher. The price is moving through our resistance line, as well as our 20 and 50 day exponential moving averages. And the only indicator or real confirmation that we're missing right now is an increase in volume. But things do look good. It looks like the stock could be starting to change trend. We do need a little bit more confirmation from that. So we'll see how the rest of this week go and the beginning of next week to kind of wait, get that final confirmation of a trend change here. Now, when it comes to the business model at IonQ, this company builds quantum computer systems that are accessible through the cloud. Now, these computers are really great for modeling our natural world as well as financial markets. They're also really good for machine learning as well as chemistry and finding new drugs. Now, the systems that these guys are building are available currently through Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and Amazon Web Services. So if you have an account with any of these three basically providers here, you can actually get access to the IonQ quantum computer and you can run your own programs right now. Now, in their last financial report, they had this line in there, which I thought was really, really cool to see. And they said, IonQ's computers outpaced entries from IBM, Honeywell, and Rigetti, and they're referring to a competition or basically a peer analysis that was done on all of these quantum computers, and it looks like, or at least they published, that IonQ's computers outpaced the major competitors in the industry, so that is very nice to see. And now, the one thing that does make this company fairly unique is that they're the only quantum hardware that is available on all major clouds. So you can access their hardware from pretty much anywhere in the world with one of these three providers. And currently they're the only quantum hardware available on more than one cloud. So they are kind of the industry standard right now and they're definitely leading the pack and they do have some great traction. And what I thought was really nice about this company, and you don't see this very much, is that they actually increased their 2021 financial forecast estimates from $5 million to $15 million. So they increased it by basically 3x, which I thought was absolutely amazing. You can see that change right here. And that is actually what they've forecasted for 2022. And so hopefully 2022 is much higher than 15. And we see that all the way through because we're gonna talk about this number here in a little bit. This number is gonna be what's super, super important in our valuation here because if the company does $60 million by 2024, or let's say they even do $120 million by 2024, that is sort of the major number that we're gonna have to use in order to justify the valuation. Now the company also did mention that it takes about 36 months for these contracts to turn into realized revenue, but that is a very good sign that they are gonna have $15 million coming in over the next sort of 36 months. It is good traction, it is good revenue, it is good customers. 
We need to talk about how this compares to their market cap though here in just one second. But the last thing you need to know before we dive into that is this was a SPAC deal. So SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation. And it seems like this is kind of the industry trend so far because all three companies I have looked at have gone through a SPAC deal in the last sort of six to 12 months here. And this company is no different. They merged with a company called DMY Technology Group 3. That put a $2 billion valuation on the company at about $10 per share. And now those shares are selling at roughly $18.34. Now the financials behind the company, in Q3, the last reported quarter, they did $223,000 in realized revenue, but they have $15.1 million in revenue under contracts, which means they have an agreement to perform a service and bring in $15.1 million, but that service has not been performed yet, which means they cannot classify that as revenue. And so as of right now, they're just contracts. And when that service gets performed, they will be converted into revenue. The company also has $587 million worth of cash and an adjusted EBITDA of negative $7.9 million. So they're burning, let's just call it $10 million per quarter right now, $40 million per year. That means that they have like 10 years worth of runway at this rate. And so the company has a great balance sheet, lots of cash and lots of runway, but they are trading fairly expensive. This is a $3.43 billion market cap company right now. Now, a couple of recent updates from the company. Some of it was super, super technical and it went just a little bit over my head. And so I summarized it a little bit here and I just said that there's several system upgrades and improvements because I am not a quantum computer scientist. So some of it I just could not understand, but it did sound like they were moving in the right direction and improving the technology. They also announced a new barium qubit technology, which makes their systems a little bit more stable. And they're now available on all major quantum software tools. And so this should give great access to developers and users of their hardware. And so lots of great updates. Some of it was pretty technical. You do need to learn a little bit about the terminology to understand it. But now let's start talking about the comparisons to the other two companies that I have reviewed. And so Quantum SI and Arcit Quantum, these are the market caps. So 1 billion and 3 billion and Ion Q is actually the most or the largest company by market cap right now at $3.43 billion. And they're also very different because this company focuses on hardware, whereas Arcit Quantum focused on cybersecurity and mostly just software. And then Quantum SI was using quantum computers for medical devices and a medical technology. And so very, very different verticals and use cases of quantum computing. But where it gets super, super interesting here is in the 2024 projected revenue. And so if you looked at these companies and you said, what is that company projecting by 2024? These are the numbers that the companies put out. So $150 million. This one was rough because they didn't, they gave me a bar chart, but they didn't put the exact number on it. So I took a conservative number and said $150 million by 2024. Arcit gave us the exact number or their projected exact number of $402 million. And as we saw, Ion Q projected $60 million on this slide right here for 2024. The only challenge with that the only issue with that is that they've already 3x'd it in 2021 so let's assume that this is even like 120 maybe or even 180 let's assume they triple the 2024 estimate and that goes up to 180 that would be probably best case scenario but even at that point the company is doing significantly less revenue than Arcit Quantum. So as of right now, if they only did 60 million, that would give them a price to 2024 sales of 57X. And if you compare that to either of the other two companies, it's seven and 7.5, which means Ion Q is extremely, extremely expensive compared to the sales that they are bringing in in 2024. Now let's say that the company does like 120 or $180 million. That would be absolutely phenomenal, but still that would put this at like a 15 to 20 X ratio, which would still be at least twice as much as either of the other two companies that I have compared so far. And so when we look at the price you are gonna pay for that stock in that company, and you compare it to the sales that that company is going to bring in or is forecasted to bring in, I think even under the best case scenario, Ion Q is extremely, extremely expensive. Now, if any of my math here is just way wrong or way off, please let me know. Leave it in the comments down below, but something just seemed really, really weird here because this number seemed extremely, extremely high. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but 
it blew me away that there's a $3.4 billion market cap company that's only forecasting to do $60 million in 2024. That's like three years away from now and the price to sales ratio is still 57X. That just seems absolutely outrageous to me and it seems extremely, extremely expensive. They also only have $15 million in contracts that are signed and forecasted to turn into revenue, whereas Arcit Quantum has $130 million of pretty much the exact same thing, and they're trading at a smaller market cap. And so again, I like Arcit Quantum the best out of the three companies I've looked at so far. The enterprise value here, this is market cap uh, plus debt minus cash. IonQ definitely has a better enterprise value than Quantum SI. I gotta find the full balance sheet for Arcit Quantum so we can compare that. But as of right now, the price to sales ratio shows that Arcit Quantum is a far better deal than IonQ and they also have much better traction and much more signed contracts at a lower valuation than IonQ. And so, so far, Arcade Quantum is my pick. Now, here are my final thoughts. Number one, I like the company and I like that they're building hardware and I like that they're partnered with these big tech companies. So I don't want to I don't want to beat on them too hard because I like what they are doing and I like that they have raised their forecast. You don't see that very much. And the fact that they have actually 3x their forecast is extremely impressive and very, very nice to see. However, even if they continue to 3x their forecast, their projections are extremely low compared to other quantum computer companies and the price to sales ratio is just exorbitantly high and $60 million in sales by 2024, in my opinion, does not justify a $3 billion valuation today. And so for me, I am not gonna be investing into this company. I might be trading it short term for, for kind of one to two week timelines, but I am not gonna be adding it to my long-term portfolio. So far, I like RK Quantum the best. I think they have a decent price to sales ratio and I think they have the most traction out of all of the quantum computing stocks I've evaluated so far. But we are not done yet. We got a couple more to go. And if there's any additional stocks that you wanna see me evaluate, definitely put them in the comments down below. And if you wanna learn more about how to understand stocks like this, do your own comparisons, read the chart and read the financials, then definitely consider signing up for my Stock Market Fundamentals course. It will walk you through everything that I do on a step-by-step -step basis so that you can better understand how to get started and make smart decisions. It's completely free, the link is down below and you get two weeks of free access to the entire Skillshare platform. And the course is only 10 hours long. So if you can do the entire course, cancel your subscription, it won't cost you a single cent, and I promise you, it'll be the best free resource that you can find online. Now, if you get any value out of this video, remember to click that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Good luck trading, good luck investing, and we'll talk to you soon.